Thank you. Hi, Teb. You're the first viewer. Teb one. Welcome, Teb one. You were the first one, followed by Sea Glass, followed by Beauty Love, followed by Megan Fox. I've been yeah. seeing you every day, Megan Fox. Thank you so much. Oh, there's David Phoenix. David Phoenix. He has joined us, and he has a piece up on Sunday paper uh, Instagram today. A great piece oh, really? on how to cook alone, dine alone, and make that a special experience, which is really... Uh, we were talking about most people do menus and everything for four to six. So he did a menu for one, Oops. and um, which is really smart. Why did you put me over here? And, well, I was okay. I was hanging off the edge there, so I was. You were? Uh, but David I, Phoenix is not only a great person but a great cook. He really makes some cook. delicious things. So uh, I'm excited to read that and maybe try one of the. Uh, Good the Friday. Recipes. Yes, thank yes. you. Happy uh, it, Good Friday. It is Good Friday. When I was growing up between 12 and 3, this time you were in the church, not allowed to speak, not allowed to eat. You were fasting all day and only fish. So uh, we have gone from the church to Instagram Live. For what good a big Friday. switch. We'll That's still a, eat our fish today. We will. Yeah, we'll eat our fish. And we will say a prayer. Oh, for sure. We're going to all say prayers. And then Melian88, sending you both lots of love and prayers. Hope you're fine. Mila says, shout out to small businesses. There you small go. Small businesses. Tomorrow morning, that's Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific, we are doing another round of Small Business Saturday. Uh, for everybody out there that works with companies, that's a business owner, that's an employee, we are doing Small Business Saturday. Tomorrow morning with Lori Grenier from Shark Tank. Um, so it's going to be great to not only get a perspective of, you know, a shark on one of the biggest business shows, actually the bu biggest business show in the world, but also from a female entrepreneur and a female business owner. Finally. Um, Lori is a owner in over a hundred different businesses. Oh, maybe and, she could help uh, me. Yeah, she could help all of us, which is why we're doing the conversation with her. But we're doing it on Rookie and the Vet, which is on your... Yes, it's on my Instagram it's page. It's on your Instagram. It's a show you're doing. I'm joining you. It's called Rookie and the Vet, and it's presenting Small, Small Business, business Saturdays. Saturday. So exactly. We have to market Rookie and the Vet properly. Yes, yeah, so a Rookie and the Vet is... Uh, the rookie, myself, interviewing a, uh, a business veteran, in this case, Lori Grenier, and kind of listening to her and seeing what kind of tips and tools and advice she can give um, everybody out there to uh, be able to kind of navigate this economic storm and, and just in general, what kind of stuff that they can learn from, um, you know, such an expert in her field. So I'm really excited to be able to talk with her. I'm yes. rookie in the vet. Yep. And uh, I'm excited because so many people have asked for us to, to talk with Lori and to bring on a shark from Shark Tank. And uh, it's going to be great. I can't wait for you guys all to come and listen. And if you have any questions, please. Uh, Leslie Geff, small business owner. Okay. Well, if you have any, uh, Leslie, if you said you're a... Yes, uh, Leslie, small yes. business owner, yes. um, bring some questions or you can message me and we will make sure to ask her as much as we can. Um, small businesses are really kind of what holds this country together and, and makes up such a large percentage of the workforce. And we are both big advocates of supporting small local businesses. And um, that's why we are doing Small Business Saturday to continue to help you guys and um, get some expert advice from from some of the best so that's tomorrow morning 10 a.m pacific 1 p.m east coast time on my instagram page at patrick schwarzenegger at patrick schwarzenegger but here today we're at home together on maria shriver's instagram and we have been talking to extraordinary people inspiring people all week long and today is no different today we're talking to dr vivek murphy he was the uh, former Surgeon General under President Obama. Uh, he wrote for the Sunday paper just a few weeks ago. He has a new book out uh, that preceded the COVID crisis. It's called Together, The Healing Power of Human Connection. And he has um, been an outspoken person about the loneliness crisis he thinks our he believes and he knows that our country is facing and people are facing a loneliness epidemic at all ages at my age 
at his age and what we can do to combat that because it's so detrimental to our health. And um, I think there's a lot of lonely people out there right now. And he talks about the effect of COVID. He just wrote an op-ed about the effect of COVID on the loneliness crisis. So I'm really looking forward to talking to him. He and his wife are great public servants, great doctors. And uh, we wanna shout out once again uh, to all the healthcare professionals who are working on our behalf, to all those who work in the grocery stores, the pharmacy stores, you know, everybody working on our behalf. And I'd like to also mention that all of us who are at home are doing our part. We're also being of service because we're serving uh, our states, our communities, our countries by staying at home. That's what we have been told to do. That's what we are doing. And so I want to commend everybody. This Apricot Lane Farms, I just saw that they, um, joined us they do incredible work speaking of small businesses so we'll get back to that maybe we'll talk to some people after we talk to dr murphy uh looks like dr Murf murphy is now on so we will add hopefully he will accept well of course he's going to accept well you never hope oh, 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 oh. hit the tripod there he is hi how are you doctor hi maria i'm great hi patrick how are you hi. both I'm doing great. I was going to introduce myself. I uh, saw you did some preparation and already know who I am. So thank you for that. But <laughs> well, I'm, you did uh, some preparation. You know of who course, I did some preparation, but I didn't know that he was going to know who I am. He's a professional. <laughs> I, I guess so. Yes. I will so. tell you, my dream is to one day be able to do something like this with my mom, too. So I, I appreciate what you guys are doing. <laughs> well, well, thank th you. Thank you so much for coming on. Patrick and I were just talking and I was explaining um, your new book called uh, Together and how it's dealing with the loneliness crisis before COVID. It was, mm. it was scheduled to come out before this. So let's begin at that with the, the focus of the book and why you think loneliness is such a public health crisis while we're in the midst of another public health crisis. Yeah, so you know, if you had told me several years ago that uh, we would be sitting here talking about loneliness, I, I wouldn't have believed you. But what happened to me is that when I was Surgeon General, I spent a lot of time traveling to communities across America and sitting in people's living rooms, doing town halls, and just asking people what was on their mind, how they were doing, how I could help. And what I found, Maria and Patrick, was really interesting, which is I, I found that on the one hand, I heard a lot about worries that I expected. People were concerned about substance use disorders. They were worried about their children who were struggling with anxiety and depression. Uh, they were worried about violence in their communities. But what I didn't expect as much was that behind so many of these stories were threads of loneliness. And people didn't come up to me and say, you know, hi, my name is Patrick. I'm struggling with loneliness. What they said were things like this. They said, you know, I feel like I'm invisible. I feel like nobody really sees me. I feel like all of these issues that I'm struggling with in my life, I have to deal with by myself. And if I disappear tomorrow, no one would even know. These were the kind of things I started hearing again and again from fishermen in remote villages in Alaska to moms and dads in the Midwest, to even members of Congress uh, in Washington, D.C. And they helped me realize that loneliness was not just something that I would, had experienced in my own life as a child, which I had, or that I had seen in my patients when I was working at a hospital in Boston, which I had, but it was really something that affected millions and millions of people all over the country. Wow. So how, how do you, for people that are out there, a lot of comments have kind of come in saying that they as well are lonely. But when you're hearing these kind of conversations that you had with these fishermen or with congressmen or congresswomen, how did you know that they're lonely or how did you get them to express to you that they were lonely? Uh, maybe some tips and tools for some of our followers and listeners of how they can express that to somebody else. Good. Yeah, it's a great question, Patrick, because I, I think it's hard to dialogue about loneliness because people uh, feel embarrassed to admit that they're lonely. There's almost this stigma around loneliness where it feels like if you express that you're lonely, somehow it's like saying I'm not likable or I'm not lovable in some way. Uh, I certainly, when I was in elementary school, I felt that way. I never told my parents that I was uh, struggling with loneliness because I thought that somehow meant I was socially deficient. But the couple of things I think are helpful if you want to open up a dialogue uh, with other people. One is to, is to normalize it, to say, number one, like a lot of people feel lonely, which is true. That's what the science tells us really clearly, that more than one in five adults in America are struggling with loneliness. And the real numbers, honestly, are probably a lot higher. 
Uh, the second is to share your own experiences. You know, when people know that you've struggled uh, with something, then it's easier for them to open up uh, and, and to share with you uh, as well. Uh, and then the third thing is to, when, when people are talking to you, if they start to broach the subject, is to really listen you know, like intently, right. to give them your full attention. Uh, a lot of times, you know, with the best of intentions, we may listen to somebody else, but we're distracted a lot. This is one of those moments. If somebody starts to open up, you want to be fully present, give them the gift of your full attention. Got it. So, uh, Doctor, can, can you, you also said in this article that I just read is that you have some strategies for people. Uh, one of them, which I thought was rather interesting, is spend some time alone so you get actually comfortable with that. Can you go through what you kind of lay out as strategies if someone is dealing with loneliness or they have a child who's struggling or a parent? Because it's rampant in all different age groups. That's absolutely right. And I'm so glad you pointed that out, Maria, is that many people, when they think about loneliness, they think that it's primarily the elderly that are struggling with loneliness, but that's actually not the case at all. It's across age groups. And in fact, we see a spike in loneliness uh, in several ages, including among millennials and, uh, and Gen Z uh, members. So, you know, it's concerning across the board. But a couple of things, that we, there are a few things that we can do. And that's the good news about loneliness is it's not something you're uh, consigned to for life. It is something that we can address and we can help each other address. Uh, I recently, as, as Maria, as you mentioned, I wrote an article on this because my wife and I were deeply concerned about what was happening with COVID-19, including the fact that as we're asked to physically distance ourselves from each other, that we run the risk of deepening uh, a sense of loneliness that has already been there uh, for so many people. And so a couple of things that we laid out that you can do. So number one is to spend at least 15 minutes each day uh, communicating with, reaching out to somebody you love. That could be a video conference call. It could be a phone call. It could be as simple as writing to them to say, hey, I'm thinking about you. I want to know how you're doing. 15 minutes may not sound like a long time, but it will lift your mood uh, for far longer than that. And when done sustainably over time can help you feel deeply connected to others. The second thing you can do is to f make sure that the quality of time that you spend with other people is high. You know, a lot of times we're distracted when we're talking to others, but this is an opportunity for us to put away technology, put away distraction, and give our attention to someone else. You're better off talking to somebody with your full attention for five minutes than having 30 minutes worth of distracted conversation. And the third thing, uh, which is powerful here, is to look for opportunities to serve. One of the great things uh, that I learned from the writing of this book, something that was taught to me by people all across the world, was that it is through service that we can find one of the most powerful antidotes to loneliness. And the reason is because when we are lonely for a long period of time, a very interesting and paradoxical thing happens to us, which is that our attention actually turns inward. It focuses more and more on ourself because we feel that we're in a state of threat. And the other thing that happens to us is that our self-esteem gradually gets chipped away over time. And we start to believe that the reason we're lonely uh, is that something's wrong with us or we're socially deficient in some way. That's why what's powerful about service is it shifts our attention from ourselves to someone else in the context of a positive action. And it also reaffirms for us that we have value to bring to the world. And that's really important to remember. So those three things are, are critical. There's one last I'll, I'll mention, which you touched on, Maria, yeah. which is the power and importance of solitude. You know, in, in the current world that we live in, uh, being alone almost feels like a, a state to avoid at all costs. But the truth is that for much of you know, our, our ancestors' lives, they spent a lot of time alone. Um, while they were together with people, there were also times where they were sitting in the forest waiting uh, you know, for game to appear. They were you know, sitting at home uh, waiting for others to come back. There was a lot of moments of solitude. In modern life, our solitude has been completely extracted from our lives, and it's been filled uh, yeah. with technology. And that's not always a bad thing. But when we stop getting comfortable with being alone, uh, that's when loneliness actually becomes more of a problem for us. So we can use this moment uh, to find even a few minutes of solitude and to use that time just to, just to sit and to breathe, to feel the wind on our face, to remember three things that we're grateful for, to pray if that's something we're inclined to do. Uh, we can use it to meditate uh, if that's also, uh, you know, a mode that speaks to you. Even those few minutes, though, uh, can be very powerful in helping you feel grounded 
and feel more centered. And when you approach other people from a place of centeredness, it's much easier to connect with them than when you approach them frazzled uh, and uncentered. Correct. Wow. And, and I, I also read you kind of um, came up with this term, this, this social recession that you're worried about that we might be going through. And I think right now with COVID and Corona um, happening, one of the first things that most Americans think about is the impact on the economy and the financial impact, but no one really thinks about the social impact. What does that really mean to, um, to people? The social yeah. yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Patrick. All the news that we hear about and the headlines are about the economic impact and the direct health impact of COVID-19. And don't get me wrong, those are extraordinarily important. But I also worry about the social cost, the cost of a deepening loneliness as we spend more and more time physically apart from each other. And that's what I think of as the social recession. And it's worth mentioning that, that the reason this is concerning is not just that loneliness is a bad feeling, but it's a bad feeling that has consequences for our health. If you look at the, the data around loneliness, what you find is that people who struggle with, with loneliness actually have a higher risk of heart disease and dementia and depression and anxiety. Uh, they tend to have more fragmented sleep. So even though they may sleep the same number of hours as you, it's fragmented sleep and the quality isn't as good. Uh, and they also, interestingly enough, uh, have shorter lifespans uh, compared to people who are not lonely. And the impact, the mortality impact of loneliness appears to be similar to the mortality impact of smoking 15 cigarettes a day, even greater than the mortality impact of obesity uh, and uh, sedentary living. I, I say this as someone who served as Surgeon General in an office that focused so much on smoking and obesity and physical activity slash sedentary living. But I had no idea until I was really taught by people around this country that loneliness was a great challenge. So I think that's the risk of, of the current moment that we may deepen our loneliness. But I don't think it has to be that way. In fact, I think the opposite can happen. If we choose to recognize this as a moment to take stock of our relationships, to refocus our life on the people in our life, and to ask ourselves if the priorities that we would state uh, in our lives are actually the same as the priorities that we live. Like I'll tell you for me, if you ask me what the top three priorities are in my life, they would be people. It would be my wife and my kids and my parents and my sister, like it would be people. But if you ask me if that measures up with how I actually live my life, I would tell you that there have been plenty of occasions where, the, where I put my time and my attention and my energy is actually on work and on other things in my life. And, and I wanna close that gap. And I think this is an opportunity for, for all of us uh, as our lives are being turned upside down uh, to ask ourselves what kind of life we want to lead. We can use this moment to strengthen our connections using some of the steps we talked about earlier. But I think it's equally as important that we come out of this time and it will end. We will be able to resume physical contact with each other and get together again. But what matters is that we come back to that moment with a commitment to focus on each other, to place each other in our lives as priorities and not as a secondary sort of objective. So that's my I, hope for what will come out of this. I love that. I mean, Foss, several people have talked about coming out of this, kind of strengthening, as you said, our familial ties, our relationships, using this as a moment to reflect on where we're lacking. Um, Great Britain, I think about a year ago, appointed a minister for loneliness. They made it a cabinet position, I recall. Do you ever see anything like that happening in this country where we actually acknowledge we have this larger kind of public health crisis of loneliness and we elevate it to a government level? Would that be helpful? Well, I do think we need to, to have a very clear and explicit focus on social connection in government. And there are a couple of reasons. It's not because government actually is the key to solving all of our loneliness problems. In fact, I came out of experience of writing the book together with the understanding that each of us actually has the power to build connection, not only in our lives, but to help others find deep connection in their lives. So we are, each of us, a solution to a disconnected world. But that said, government has a really powerful role it can play. Uh, when government focuses on a problem and calls it out, it can draw people's attention yes. to it. It can bring research resources to bear. It can coordinate efforts around the community so that we can more intentionally design workplaces and schools to facilitate connection. And so what I would love to see, like in our government, is a very explicit focus on strengthening social connection. I do think it would be helpful to have an individual who worked across sectors uh, in government 
to help drive us toward that goal. Because if you prioritize and care about human connection, that affects how you design transportation policy and housing policy. It impacts where you put healthcare research dollars. It impacts how you think about educational policy and the design of schools. So this is not one issue that should be siloed off to the side and uh, you know, and squirreled away in the Department of Health and Human Services. This is a larger principle. It's a deeper value that has to inform not only our government's policies, but the decisions ultimately that each of us make in our lives. I love that, uh, Doctor. Several people here are saying, you know, I'm a bit, I'm lonely. I'm a bit of an introvert. Are there ways for me to uh, volunteer through the te through technology, televolunteering? A couple of people have asked, is there such a thing as a lonely tribe or a lonely group that they could join? Um, you know, I don't know if there's any kind of thoughts you have about that. Well, that's such a great question. You know, I, I think one of the exciting things that's happening right now, despite the deep pain that people are experiencing, is people are looking for new ways to serve. And, yeah. you know, sometimes when you're feeling alone and you're feeling down, you, you might hesitate to reach out to other people because you might think, gosh, am I the only one who feels this way? It feels like everyone else is living the dream on Instagram and on, and on Twitter and they seem to be doing great. But you can be relatively assured that most people are going through some kind of turmoil right now because of everything we're all going through. So I think this makes it all the more important that we reach out to other people in our life. If you're looking for ways to serve right now, what I would say is start very locally. Think about your neighbors and ask, are they okay? Can I check on them? Can I just make sure that they've got food, that they're able to go out? A lot of our neighbors may be elderly or have you know, other chronic illnesses and may not feel comfortable going to the grocery store and may have a hard time ordering groceries in many parts of the country because the wait time is so long for delivery. Yeah. Simply calling up your neighbors, reaching out to friends to check on them to make sure they're okay. These are powerful ways uh, that you can serve. And reaching out to service organizations, whether it's your faith organization, like your church or your temple, or to the local YMCA, can also be powerful. And you, what you can do is you can just volunteer and say, I would like uh, a list of people that I could reach out to and call to make sure that they're okay. Yeah, and I awesome. guarantee you, many of them would welcome that. Yeah, although there are some people who feel like, okay, well, I'm too shy to do that, or no one's checking on me, you know. Sure. It, it, you know, it's, and this is why, in, in part, um, it's really important that we all check on each other, right? And yeah. one thing that I've noticed in, in my own life is when I've been in a deep like, place of, of loneliness, and I don't feel like reaching out to anyone else, when somebody reaches out to me, that doesn't just make me feel better. It actually makes me feel empowered, actually, to, to reach out to others as well. And so there's, there's a, a real synergy and spillover effect here. And that when we serve, when we are served by others, that is a virtuous cycle that enables all of us to, to serve and to give more. I you know, I'll, I'll, yeah, Maria, I'll say one last thing, which is just, a, you know, it's on my mind. Uh, you know, I have so many friends and colleagues who are, they're in medicine, they're doctors, they're nurses, they're on the front lines right now. They're um, putting their lives on the line to take care of people who are sick with COVID-19. And a lot of times they don't have the personal protective equipment like masks that they need. And right. so it's a really difficult situation for them. And I really think of these folks as heroes. But one of them was telling me just the other day about uh, a patient of his who, who passed away recently from COVID-19. Um, and he was talking about the conversations uh, that he had with that patient before they died. Um, and they reminded me really deeply of the conversations that I've had with patients over the years in their final hours and final days. Because what was strikingly similar to me is the content of those conversations is that in those final hours, you know, people actually don't talk much about the promotions they received or how much is in their bank account. They don't talk about how many followers they have on social media. What they talk about are relationships. They right. talk about the people they love, about the relationships that broke their heart, about the, the family that they wish they had spent more time with. There's something deeply clarifying about those final moments of life. Mm -hmm. And I think this, but the key is that we don't have to be in those final stages mm -hmm. to learn and to, to incorporate and to live the lessons that so many of those patients were uh, kind enough to share with me and with other doctors over the years. We can start to do that right now. We can use this moment to build a, a people-centered life. And that ultimately was my, I would say if I had one credo uh, that came out of writing this book, it was to put people first. And if we approach life, I think with a put people first 
philosophy, I sense that it, we will not only be more fulfilled and healthier and stronger, but we will create that kind of fulfillment for many people around us. Oh, it's I a love... great way to, to end that. I mean, that was a beautiful yeah. kind of story. And I think that's such a great point that there's always, we've said two ways to look at kind of every situation. And um, right now, just like you're saying, find ways to be kind of that, that people person and have those moments with, uh, you know, checking in on other people and use this time to remember really what it's all about. Um, a lot of people on here, which I totally agree, say that you should, uh, you should be a voice for, for books and for uh, calming apps and stuff like that. Your voice is very calming and, and therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of them. Thank you all. I appreciate that. But I want to mention the book is really terrific. It's called Together, The Healing Power of Human Connection. It just came out. We excerpted it in the Sunday paper a couple of weeks ago, but it is a really timely book if you find yourself at home, uh, which is where you're supposed to be. It's really worth reading because uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more about what you said about the 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 feeling that comes from these deep connections, these deep conversations that you have with another human being make you feel way more uh, empowered, way more full than, you know, all the things that society tells you will actually do that for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think this is a moment to actually put into practice many yeah. of the things. Can we post the yes, title? Yes, I'll put it in the comments. The Healing Power of human connection you can get that together. on amazon Oops. it's called together like this together. show is human i mean uh home together it's called together the healing power of human connection human connection yes and it's brand there new you go. together the yeah it's called together the healing power of human connection so thank you for your service uh to our country for being Surgeon General, for raising this issue of loneliness. Uh, I think it's so important. Um, will you put that back up there, Parker? I'm sorry, yeah. I'm typing. You're reading all these things. No, uh, typing. You can go to indie uh, bookstores, people are saying, yes, you're right. Go to indie bookstores if they're open. And if they're not open, or uh, online. you can get them online. Yeah, I guess you go to the indie bookstore and get it online through the indie bookstore. But a lot of people are saying, uh, please put it in the link. We will do that. We'll put it in the, the link so that you can get uh, the doctor. So just finally, before you go, when do you think we're going to, quote, get back to normal? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think normal will be a, a series of gradations. I think we'll, it'll probably be at least a couple of months, I think, before we start opening up. Um, when we do open up, there will be likely still be some restrictions, like keeping distance from others, possibly still wearing masks. I don't think large gatherings will be permitted in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But look, we eventually will get back to normal. Um, I don't think normal won't fully be here until we either have a vaccine that works or until we have a medication that's highly effective. Um, hopefully the medication will come soon. The vaccine is uh, probably about a year to 18 months off. Um, but that's why I think it's, it's really important in these times because this isn't going to just be a few weeks more, it's going to be many months more, that we stick together, that we help each other and look out for each other. Because as rough a ride as it may be, it will be a lot easier to manage the, the shocks you know, of the next few months uh, if we're supporting each other and looking out for each other. Wonderful. Right. Well, thank you so much for stressing uh, this message, which is so important. Uh, we need each other. And I love the title together because we can do everything together, but it's really hard to do great things alone. Actually, it's possible right. to do everything good alone. God bless you. And thank you very much. And uh, have a wonderful thank you so much. weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you both so much, Maria and Patrick. It's great to be with you. God bless you too. Thank and you. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. Another great Yeah, he's interview. so inspiring. Former Surgeon General. He the was. book, uh, Together, The Healing Power of Human Connection. And together. that is what heals, The Healing Power of Human Connection. I'd Home like to, Together, The Book Together. That's right. A lot of together. We're all in this together. And for those of you who feel alone, I hope you will remember that we're here. Um, we, we try to come here every day at 2 o'clock. Uh, so that you feel perhaps a little less alone. And I thought the points he made about people on uh, 
their deathbeds or when they're dying. I've read a lot about that. Regrets uh, when people are on their deathbed. It's always that I didn't spend more time with the people that I loved. It was never about, gee, I wish I'd been busier. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd run around. I wish I had hustled more. It was, it's always, um, I wish I had stopped. I wish I had stopped the hustle and connected with my kids or my siblings or people that I really care about. I wish people that I care about knew I really cared about them. Right. I really care about you. Thank you. I really care about you. <laughs> and I really care about everyone that's listening. So yes. thank you guys for watching. And hopefully this continues to impact you and brings a uh, optimistic, you know, message every, every day. And you guys can learn from this. And um, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. What's it uh, called? Rookie and the Vet presents Small Business Saturday. Where? Again on my Instagram page, at Patrick Schwarzenegger. I'll comment it right now again. That's 10 a.m. Pacific, West Coast okay. time. And then on Easter and, Sunday, uh, I'll be back here by myself early. Sunday morning, right before he does Easter Mass, uh, where we normally go, but we'll watch it virtually. Uh, this... Um, Sunday, as I know many of you will also be attending services virtually, and we're all going to do the best we can. I know it's not what we want, but we're being of service. So please remember you are being of service. And we have a great week next week. We're going to kick it off with Mike Rowe on Monday, who has this great Facebook watch show called Returning the Favor. And they've been doing some special editions right now, which are so inspiring. So we're going to kick off an inspiring, motivating. How do you, how do you, people ask to pin it. How do you pin the comment? I haven't, I haven't learned that yet. Pin what? You can pin a comment so that it stays there on the bottom for everybody to, to read it throughout. Um, I have yet to figure out how you pin something. You pin, you mean while we're talking, you're pinning? Yeah, you can pin a comment on the bottom. Uh, someone knows okay. how to do that. You can, you can tell me right now. Um, okay. But if not, no worries. All right, we'll figure out the pinning thing. Hi from a Cape Codder. Hi, hi from a Cape Codder. Hi from somebody in Michigan. Your brother's in Michigan. He showed mm -hmm. us a really long line today outside Trader Joe's that he was waiting in to try to get some food. So um, I don't know what this pin thing is, but we'll, it's like you, we'll, we'll pay, we'll, we want to waste people's time with our pinning thing. Oh well, yeah, I know. I was just but, saying. Okay. Well, there's. Okay. Uh, we won't waste what is your it? time. Where's this? Well, that's like, uh, oh, that's, that's, that's what you want to go live with. That's oh, how you go. Okay. That's how you go live with someone. I wanted to see that if that? our friends from the, um, the farm were there, but oh. um, I guess they're not there anymore. I don't know how that works either. So, huh. okay, well, we'll figure out. Hi from Palm Beach, Florida. I have a lot. I used to spend Easter in Palm Beach, Florida all the time when Oops. I was a little girl. Those were, that, was, that wasn't that long ago, but it was a little bit ago. But all I'm, right, well, okay. I'm going to find out how to pin something. I'll do it. But again, it's tomorrow, 10 a.m. with Lori Grenier from Shark Tank, Small Business Saturday. Yes. That'll be on my page at Patrick Schwarzenegger, 10 a.m. Pacific. Dot com. Dot com. No. Dot, dot live Instagram. That was a joke. Okay. Uh, the phone is so low. It says down. comment boxes on the bottom and can then. Who is post telling it. you that? Who's telling you that? Mick, Mick Lansky. Lansky. Oh, tap and hold it. Okay, let's try that quickly. Why are we doing Sorry. that? Because well, you'll see. Watch. Pacific at. Oh, Maury, tap, comment, and hold it. Boy, everybody knows how to tap and pin, except for us. Nope. Did you tap and pin? I thought I did. Okay. Well, we will have this Instagram tutorial later offline, All right. so we don't. Uh, we didn't. There's, do. there's a thing there. I anyway. know. And tell us who you want to hear from. We're trying to book many. Oh, oh, oh! oh pin. Pin. Boom. Oh, boom! You, to, you, you comment pin. it, and then you hold it down. 10 a.m. Pacific. That's, okay, boom. There you go. So then it stays there on the bottom. But you don't say what day. You didn't well, say what day. They know right now. They know it's tomorrow, right, guys? You okay. know it's tomorrow. Okay. Wow. Small business Saturday. I would hope you know what in the... what day that is. <laughs> okay. Happy uh, Good Friday. Happy, happy Holy Friday. Saturday. Happy Easter. 
if we don't see you, but we'll see you tomorrow. We will see you tomorrow, Elizabeth 10 a.m. That's a good idea. All right. God bless you. Still trying for Ryan Reynolds. We are yes. still trying. We need Whoever help. Whoever gets, could go book Ryan Reynolds for us. What happens? Please do. <laughs> we will, we'll, we'll like, I don't know, we'll send you like a cup of coffee or we'll send you cupcakes or cookies. Cupcakes or, or cookies. We'll definitely send you some of your homemade coffee or something. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Bye. <laughs> 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. East Coast. Bye, 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 bye.